Okay, I think we're live. Well, it's been a while. Um, I will just get straight to what I'm working on. I We have enums now, and they I want them to be able to have methods. And the way you would do that is you want to define a namespace in the same um, in the same scope that you define the type. Um, types are anonymous. Anonymous types are allowed. So it's kind of this weird thing I'm trying to do. In this language, it's a bit of a departure where um, you can associate a name with a type if you want, but you don't have to. It's a lot like TypeScript. And if you want um, to associate more than just a name with that type, such as methods or associated constants, then you make a namespace in the same scope. Now, I fixed a bug last night where any namespace by that same name was was counting. The way we we're searching for this, and, and now the way we're searching for it is it has to be in the same scope with the same name, so that should work. But I think there might even be a bug with that, as we're about to see. The goal here, though, is not so much the methods. I want to get the methods working, but I also want to. Um, I'm doing. I'm tiptoeing into control flow analysis, where um, so I have this crash function in the Prelude now. Crash, as you'll see. So there's an extern one that's implemented in C that returns type never, which is a lot like Rust's never. And then there's the one that that um, we can call um, ourselves that also returns type never. And what that means is it never returns. And so there's some neat stuff you can do when you have something that never returns. I implemented this for if else. So if else never, we can see this test passes, where I say x is an int, if false. Now I'm not doing the constant folding, so this could be. Imagine this is either true or false. We're not. We're not relying. We're not folding this in, relying on it being false and going to zero. Um, in fact, let's bolster this test a bit just to prove so fun. Um, do it. B bool int, and then I just want to put. Um, Really put everything and do it. And the point is that it compiles. Um, but I guess we can call uh, assert do it true. Um, equals zero. I think that's going to be it. And then return zero. So the way instead of this, we want to use b and if. Um, and then we're passing true. So if not b and if b here, and then we should get zero. But the point the point is not that. The point is that we see that this branch is divergent, and we we don't say hey the then branch was of type never, but the else branch was of type int. We don't say the then branch was of type int, the else branch was of type never. They don't match. We actually say oh we have branching happening, and one of the branches diverges. Right uh, in this case, it's returning never. Um, it could also be returning from the function. But the point is that you can't get past. You can't get down here without returning. So the only type we need to worry about is this type. So we're able to safely type this as int. And it's this like um, flow sensitive typing. Not 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 quite like that. It's probably the wrong term. But it's a little bit of control flow analysis. So um, this is eventually how return will work too. Because if this returned 12, then I can safely, it's the same thing. I could safely type x to int. Because even though this doesn't return an int, it returns. So it's divergent, right? So anyway. This works for um, if else, and I want it to work for pattern matching, which is the only other place that I let you really branch. Um, so the idea is that any branch that returns never doesn't count for um, the type checking. And that's that's kind of it. So I think it's going to be actually a bit harder than I thought. But anyway, let's let's run this this bolstered version of this test. So I can um, I think you might notice I'm I'm using Z instead of Rust Rover now. Um, and you know I like it a lot. Um, I'm I'm giving it I'm giving it a shot. Having a lot of fun with it. Having a lot of fun with how often it's getting updated. So what I'll do is I'll spawn a task here in Z. I have a task called run file that's going to run the file I'm in. So run file. I can actually um, open local tasks. Run file calls run.sh with Z file run.sh um, does this. Um, why does this work? I have a new binary now. Oh, because I have to set the default binary. Okay, so uh, let's let's go ahead and run this. Um, so this would be run file if else never. Wow, it's so much slower when I'm recording. Oh, it's done. Okay, let's run that again. Wow. Oh, is it is it spawning the the GUI? I don't think so. Mm -mm. 
Wow. I'm really surprised by how much slower that is. But that seems to work. Let's just uh, give it the old sanity check here. Uh-oh, at Prelude. So this is really sad. I have I have the uh, file and line number where we crash, baked into the binary, you know, like a, like a grown-up, which is really cool. But the problem is it doesn't grab this file and line number. It unfortunately always is Prelude line 26 because this is where we're calling the intrinsic compiler file. So um, I this way that I did this with uh, having a built-in function isn't isn't going to work. Unless I um, unless I call a file in line from from user land, so I'm not sure what what to do here. It's pretty disappointing. Um, I can go ahead and delete these, but anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, if I call BFL crash directly, I don't know. I've never I've never tried this taking a reference immediately. Um, Uh oh. At if else never at line four. How cool is that? So obviously this is not nice, but um, but but I'll fix it later. But you can see I've done all the hard parts here uh, of getting this information to the compiler, um, and baked into the binary as a string and passing the reference to the C function. So um, if lib dot c here, um, here's crash, which is just a footprint of uh to standard error accessing my my strings my file name um, and then a call to abort which is what i decided i think this is the right thing to do here as unix abort eventually we need to abstract even that away so that we can support multiple platforms um like particularly i want to i want to do wasm so um whatever the equivalent of abort would be there uh, rather than the libc or yeah i guess is this libc i don't even know if that's if that's like unix or if that's always available in libc in which case maybe we can use it and the wasm target will will do the right thing anyway um <laughs> That's still just a detour. So um, back to enum method. So I, yeah. So what we want is value of a. So let me, well, I think I'm actually going to make a copy of this file because this, this is testing something else. So we'll duplicate it and we'll call this, um, call this match uh, never. So be our never one, which means we don't we don't need we, we only need little b and we just want to call uh, b dot value. We really just want to we want this to compile and we can assert. Um no, we actually want an a. A uh one. So we'll call it a, and then we want to assert a dot value is one. And that's going to be plenty for us. And the, the method version is, is testing that the methods work. Um, so let me change this back to x and y. Dot value. We don't need the z. We don't need the extra variant. We're not testing anything that difficult. Um, oh, we might as well have a more interesting enum. So this could just always return 0. And then we could assert that a... Um, if I were to have a um, a dot b, and I actually need to explicitly type that to e, and I were to call that value on it, I would expect that to be equal to zero. So this is enum method. Let's let's run this first. Yeah, I think I'm spawning. I think I'm starting Raylib with with my my run command right now. There's a window popping up. So I built a GUI for the compiler that lets you compile over and over. Uh, it's it's really cool. It's very work in progress though, but. Um, there's there's a bigger vision there, so if I look at run main yeah GUI is false by default. Okay, well I need to resist I need to resist investigating why it's slow, but um here what 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 I'm seeing uh, I went to record and I was going or stream I guess I'm doing both. I was going to investigate this. Um, sorry, the never, right? Get the never working because on my to-do list we have um, match the never type. I've done all the work except for on match, so the match on never. But I um, realized that you know method's not compiling due to some other work I was doing. So we can see the method method value does not exist on type e. Um, so let's fix that. And the way to do that, we um, we're going to jump into the typer. Um, 
and say method does turn off regex, which is a really annoying thing about Zed. These come on and off in different different times, and I almost never want them on unless I explicitly want them on for that search. So that's something I, I really uh, that, that really bothers me. So we have method does not exist on type. Um, this needs to be quoted, I think. I think that would be helpful. Um, okay, so how is this supposed to work? Um, which one is it failing on, first of all? It's failing on x.value. So that's the one that's the, the enum variant. So to minimize our... Um, Minimize what could be going wrong. Let's just call x.value first. Rerun this. And I hope we'll still... Same issue. Method value is not exist on type E. Okay. So what's supposed to be happening is... E is an enum. So we come here. We're in a method called resolve parse function call. And what should happen is, OK, if this is all a special case for the dot as cast. And now we're here. So we're doing method lookup. Um, so we're looking for E's type definition info. And we don't fail here. So we know that uh, we find it. And so we get, we get it a scope. And then we say, hey, get the namespace scope in the immediate scope, uh, the scope where it's defined. And so what that should do is um, get the scope where our type E was defined, which should be root scope, and then look for a namespace with the same name. Um, and then look for a namespace with the same name in that scope, and only in that scope, not searching up. It has to be in the same one. Um, and then if we find it, then we're good to go. We get the scope of that namespace because the scope of that namespace is going to be the thing that where we can look up method names. OK, so why? Let's go down to the copy for enum. Why does this not work? Um, so we're using the enum's name and definitely the scope where the enum is defined. And then on that scope, we're looking for a function um, of the same name as our um, function call, which is value. So uh, my first step would be to just uh, print out enum scope here. Um, no, enum defin info. And then I think I also want to print out um, the name. So this is going to be the. Um, Not the function call's name. So I guess what I'll end up getting here is just a scope ID and then the actual name. So the name is E. And the scope is 0. So it is in the root scope. So we have to assume that enum scope ends up equal to the root scope. Um, uh, I think I can scope display scope, make scope name. Um, I have a way to, I have a way to display scopes. It happens in the in when in the full um psh, psh, psh. scopes display scope. So why was that not showing up? We need an analog for this anyway. I think this is how I do this. I think I did that right. And now I could say 
Sorry. Very clumsy. Okay. Um. Well, I guess I'll unwrap it. And that may panic, which would tell us where we're failing for sure. But it didn't. All right, so here's here's my scope to string. Root dot e is the enum scope, and it has in it a function value of a. Exploring this data is actually exactly what I built the GUI for. It can you can click around and see scopes, and then look at what's in them, things like that. So um, for now, we deal with text dumps and writing debug and all this stuff. But uh, the dream is that you just are running, uh, just running the compiler and just inspecting inspecting the state. E equals you know maybe oh that oh no yep okay that was it I renamed it to value fa and I didn't so this is what happens when the compiler is usually broken and you have no highlighting. You just assume the code is right and the compiler is wrong. Um, this could be a bad code gen bug. I think it might have something to do with this inline expression. Yeah. So when I created inline there, because it's not coming from a variable. <laughs> you know, I, I do kind of, I do kind of want to look into this. Uh, okay. Well, to do it. And focus on the never issue. So what I wanted was a case here where we crash. No bees allowed. And I want to see this compile for one, the typing as returning in it. And, um, Maybe, okay. I could not. I could not be. I don't think I am type checking. Now that I think about it, yeah. Okay. So LVM tells us I got a bool here and I got an int here. So I'm not even type checking these enough for for this to be an issue. So let's fix that first. So typer and I know exactly. So um, this is going to be val match. Um. So for a match expression, and this win is a match expression. We have two arms. And once I get back the first arm, I say, hey, the result type, um, it's hard when I'm so zoomed in. Yeah, I say, hey, the result type is um, the type of the first arm. I thought I did better than that. I thought I passed the expected type in. So here's where I chain. So at this point, eval match arms has already happened. This this does all the work.
So let's look in eval match arm. The arm expert parse case has an expression. Okay, so, so once we've evaluated the pattern, we evaluate the consequent expression inside of it. So here, and this is where we pass the expected type in, but we don't type check here. Um, so we have an expected type. Okay, and so this is where this is where I'm doing it. So once I do the first one, I take an expected type, and then also if I didn't have one after I do the first one, I set them. So inference will work, but we're just not type checking. So uh, so each time a case comes back, it needs to um, if it's a never, we just ignore it. If it's the first one we've gotten. The question is, is expected type ID a contract or is it a hint? I think if we have one of these, then, then we need to evaluate to that type. So we'll treat it as a contract. So each time we evaluate an expert, we can go ahead and say, um, if let error message equals self dot type check types, um, expected being um, Expected arm type ID. Um, make sure we have one. So only if we have an expected type. So we won't if we didn't have an expected type for this hole or if this is the first arm. Or actually, if we don't have an expected type for the entire pattern match. In this case, we do because we need to yield an int, right? But if we didn't have an expected type for the whole pattern match and this was the first arm, then we don't care. Otherwise, we know what we're expecting and we need to we need to check. And then the actual is going to be the arm expert get type. And the scope is um, what scope are we in? Um, for the sake of type checking these types, um, the match scope ID is going to be fine. We're inside this match. Um, then we can return make fail span with, um, and I'll, I always come back and do the do the better error later. I don't want to break flow of the actual implementation. And then I need a span. Let's see, arm expert span. Oh, that's actually perfect. So later I'll fix this and say expected this, got this, all that stuff. Actually, we have a message that will have the expected got. Um, we just need to, oh, this might actually, this might actually be good enough because my type check types helper yields a nice message. Type check types fails with a, um, with a message. And this is just expected type ID. Let's use the same name and just shadow it as the unoptional version. I like that better. So I can't make that mistake. Dereference the damn integer. And let's see. Let's watch our GUI window flash up. Yeah. Oh, that looked like, it's like a security thing, like verifying application or something. Maybe that's why it's so slow. I, I'm, I don't know. Maybe I can like freeze the video and find out what, what in the world's going on. Um, whoa, hey, mismatching arm type, expected int, but got bool. Um, look, looks like we did it. So the question is, is this a good place to do the type checking? I think so, because I think we don't want to do any more work than is necessary. Um, if we've gotten this far, we know we have a mismatch. Um, mismatching case type for when case. So I'm calling these wins. Well, I use the keyword win, but I'm still calling it a match because calling it a win, using win as a noun, win as a noun kind of stinks, I've realized. So I have to call this a win case or using win as an adjective, I guess, or as a noun. It's it's really awkward. I think match is better. So if we're going to call it matching. Say, hey, you match with the win. Why not just use match and say you match with match? Um, unless you want to get away. I think the idea is to get away from the term matching altogether because it sounds a little bit uh, like esoteric and theoretical. Ooh, pattern matching. When really, like, you can bring it down to earth. Like, if is so great because it's just if. And when, you know, you could just say when, right? Um, when this is that. Otherwise, when it's that. Otherwise, when it's that. Um, but you could still call it pattern matching. Or you need to call it casing or when. I don't. I don't know. No, there's also the idea of just using switch and just saying, hey, switch isn't like in C or JavaScript. Switch is really good. Switch is powerful. You know, switch is basically pattern matching. But 
this this is all neither here nor there. I'm gonna say match case. Uh look at this highlighting though. Or underlining. I'm so happy with this. Okay. Mismatching type for match case expected. Uh, not an A. This is a B. So we run this. Expected int, but got never. So this is our special case here. Um, let's just nest further. So you, um, yeah, so basically you have a list of types, and they all need to unify. And the idea, this is why I'm not checking that they're identical, by the way. I'm just checking that um, one satisfies the other with type check types. That's important. And they need to unify. Um, and I think the rule is that it, and if any of them are never, they just don't contribute, right? So like, okay, all these types need to unify and never doesn't count because it never yields. So um, we can just ignore them. So we can say if arm expert get type is the never type ID. Well, if it's not the never type ID, then we type check. We can say never is divergent, divergent. So need not contribute to the overall type of the pattern. And um, try this again. And we crash with this as a B, which is what we wanted. It compiles. It'll give you, and that means that this assertion succeeded, very importantly. So if I, I can negate this just to prove, yeah, so assert failed. Um, I can fix this, by the way. I can do the line number and stuff once I, <laughs> it'll be prelude line 26, but um, eventually it'll be fixed. Yeah, this is a B uh, at prelude BFL 24. So that's exactly what we wanted. I, I'm sure there may be some other, just to show off what I have, what if I do C, um, gosh, this is uh, a C. What happens here is we get uh, impossible pattern, no variant named C. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, you know, if I do a, a wholly different pattern, like a struct, like that, impossible pattern, expected struct type. Um, it's kind of backwards. Uh, we got this pattern, and then we're saying, hey, what's my expected type? And it's not a struct. But really, we should say the pattern's wrong. Uh, let's fix that. Impossible pattern, and then expected struct type. Impossible pattern. Um, match target is not a struct. We can even do this. Type to string is very powerful. Match target E equals enum A and B is not a struct. This is my my default display right now for a named enum does the name and the whole thing, which is going to be a problem. I can't do this. I need to either just use the name or um, expand it. Probably just use the name because the user gave it that name, so they'll know what E is. Um, but for my own purposes, still having it show the definition is good. And I just realized that this should be pipes, not commas, because I, uh, I replaced. I replaced the commas with pipes. Match target E, you know, A and or B is not a struct. Crash, this is a C. So if we come back here, that's not what we're testing. Um, I also could do, um, let me show off here, B42. You'll notice B doesn't have a payload, but here I match on it. So we get, you know, variant has no payload which I think is awesome. So I can turn this into a test case that should crash. And so we expect this to succeed and then the crash. 
And then we need to look at the cogen bug. So the way I do this is I say um, abort message as the process aborts. And we'll say this is a B. And now we're going to um, move this guy into my test sources. Oh no. I slowly turned my regular method test case <laughs> into my never test case. Okay, well, this is now enum method match never, just so that I can, just so that I get it. Uh, match never can be deleted. So we have enum method match never. Um, run the tests. If else never is failing, failed wrong exit code, expected some zero, actual none. But uh, importantly, in a method match never. I don't know what order these are in, I just realized. In a method match never is passing. Now let's say I expected it to abort with this as the vastif. So now if we run the test suite, we see you know, method match never abort message. This is a B, do not match expected message. This as a festive. So the test suite is is humming, giving us everything we need to know. So we're able to say, I expect this program to abort with this message. And the way I'm doing that is just using Rust's command thing to run the executable, um, collecting the standard error output, um, grabbing the last line, and parsing parsing this prefix. It's the most simple most simple thing you can imagine. Here in test suite, um, here I have test expectations, and this would be an example of abort error message. Um, and we can uh, expect to abort, but got compile error. Yeah, if last line starts with abort message prefix, uh, trim it and store that, and just 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 do. Just do, just do stuff. Okay, so why did if else never fail? If else never failed wrong exit code. If else never. I'm calling do it with false. Did I leave that wrong? We want to call it with true. So if not true. Yeah. So do it true, B is true, if false, come down here, if true, so in neither case do we crash, but the typing's all okay, zero plus zero is zero. All right, um, let's just do this one more time, just a little bit of test porn, and whoa, so why is it slow now? OBS, OBS does some things to your computer. Here we go. Sorry, I'm, I'm clicking around in OBS to try to um try to make this not. All right, here we go. Man, it, it's so slow. It makes me sad. Am I dropping frames? How do I how do I check that? That's something streamers say. Dropped frames zero. Do you think Activity Monitor can give us any hints? In my experience, no. And then they all run. And then they slow down again. Well, let's let's kill Docker. Remind me later. We're okay on RAM. Okay, that's how they usually run. Yay! All right, and we're at exactly 50, which is so satisfying. Yeah, should we sort these by name before we before we close out? Just one more win. Um, it's a lot better now. It runs them in parallel, and actually, there's an option 
to use the LLVM interpreter as well, which makes them run super fast, but some stuff doesn't work. Uh, specifically abort. If you call abort, uh, it just seg faults. But let me try interpret true parallel true. And I'm only going to run tests that have to do with options. Boom. Uh, and we got the seg fault. And I'm not sure the filter worked. I think maybe it's supposed to be dash dash filter. But um, see how it says interpreting where it didn't before. So it, it's extra, extra fast, but um, doesn't test exactly what, what we want it to. So we can go interpret false. And then when we're not interpreting, what we're doing is we're actually uh, emitting object file, compiling with LVM, linking with libc, creating a binary, and then shelling out to the OS saying, run this executable um, from the Rust code using like the standard command API, and then you know um, grabbing the output. So that's why it's so slow. Um, it's not usually this slow. It's usually the, you know, <laughs> they just kind of all blip down in about a second, but um, super slow somehow when, when I'm streaming. Yep, and there was that thing again. Hmm. Well, let's sort them, shall we? So what I was going to say is I have this phase now where um, all tests, I collect the test cases in a pass walking the directory, and then I have an execution phase. This is so that I can say whether it's parallel or not, and the file stuff is all is all good to go. But the point is that then we now have this all tests that we can sort. So now what we can do is um, we can say all tests. I don't sort things often in Rust. Um, if I just say sort. Will that compile because pathbuff implements ord? So pathbuff implements ord. And is that going to be an ordering that we want or not helpful? A, C, I, W, E, A. I don't think so. Ah, but we're doing the parallel thing. So that's going to be a problem. Let's turn off the parallel thing. E A S S S A. Hmm. Sort by. Uh, P1, P2, is that what we get? This is a Vecca path buff. Sort by takes a pair. No, it takes two arguments. So you do it like this. P1. File name. Um, can I compare two OSters? Two options of OSters? You want a you want pointer to an option? Oh, this is the wrong thing to run anyway. I don't know. This takes mute self, returns nothing. Sorts the slice with a comparator function. Almost there. These look for tests and all test.iter. Not parallel. What's the matter? I don't understand. We're sorting all tests by. Okay. What 
what's going on? Is it something going on with with Ord or C compare on OSter? The only way I know to let's unwrap this and to stir to string lossy. And this will be unwrap to string lossy. I really don't want to do it this way. Maybe we ask Chad Gipity. I'm gonna try. I haven't I haven't enabled copilot in months. Uh Sort by file name. Um, I think that's what we did. Oh man, here I wanted to finish with a softball because we did our main thing. And Nothing. Parallel is false. I mean, let me. I think dumping the args is good. To be very sure that parallel is false. So I have the args. Um, hello, old friend. That is really annoying. I forgot how lovely you were. Um, it's. It's there's a thing. There's a thing to make it pretty print. You know what I'm talking about? Is it that? Is it this? The little hash? It is. Interpret false parallel true. Okay. Wait. Did I leave it? <gasps> parallel true. Interpret false. I don't think it works. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Parallel. I wonder if these filters aren't, if these options aren't making it because of the way s.sh. I think, I think only I'm using this dollar one here. That's cargo test, cargo run, dash dash interpret. Yeah, only the first word. So let's just run. Not in parallel. It's quite slow. Um, OK. Obviously, we'd benefit from drying up. It's test code. Okay, they're in order now, but I can only have them in order when I don't run in parallel. That's a little meh. This compiler error is expected, by the way, on enumcast. Payload type mismatch expected in, but got bull. Well, you go to enumcast. No, um, sorry, enum. Yeah, enum bad. Enum fail. Error message. So this is a compiler error, which I should probably rename. Uh, payload type mismatch expected in, but got bull. So. That's, that's that. Well, um, let me see if I have any viewers at all. Which, oh no. Which I doubt. I don't think I just showed anything. Uh, dashboard. Somebody's watching. Um, I'm not sure that's true. Stream manager. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, if you are out there, thanks for watching. It's been about an hour. I'll be uploading the recording. Um, 
And, you know, that was pretty big. Let me, let me, let's do, let's commit, of course. So I think that was pretty nice. So what did we do? So um, a little bit of cleanup there. Um, we added display scope, not really worth mentioning. Okay, so never, so let's start drafting. Um, um, never match. I'll just put it in here, never match. Um, I don't want to keep the comment, the, the, the prompt. I don't want to keep the prompt. This is being a bit anal, but I think I just have parallel actually. I only want to sort not parallel okay that's fine um, um support never types when matching i think that's the only fix we oh actually type check match arms and just to make sure because I did change something. There we go. We're all passing. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something or had some fun or uh, just chilled for a little while. Uh, see you next time where, you know, we'll, looking at the to-do list, maybe we'll add floats because I th think I might need those at some point. Uh, yeah, or maybe we'll do recursive structs. Or some syntactic sugar. Maybe some syntactic sugar. I think we're going to do that next time. All right. See ya.